What's up, y'all? We're back. I'm going to do some more typography today. Just kind of get hammering on it. I've added some new elements. I added a marker and a block quote and a summary and details and some like more interactive things that maybe are less in a normal typography thing. But to me, they need to look like they're in the family and they're components in the web. And I want to style them and make them look uh, nice uh, based on the side of like this perceptual stuff we were doing before. Um, and we had some weird things happen uh, last time I mean like this here which I still don't hate but it is it's just a little annoying I mean it looks fine here like our ramp looks good I even kind of like how these are um, like one's bold it's like the same size um, anyway it's just kind of there was a lot of fun to be had in here and I'm gonna go have some more fun so talking about some of the images and things that we've added oh I need to add an image let's see it's like lorem pixel is that the site yeah lorem pixel give me an animal uh, here, did I get it? No, give me an animal color image. Sweet, I will copy the image address and pop that into the source here and save. So that should give me an image down here in a fig caption. All right, cool. Although the fig caption is empty, ah, here, this is an animal. <laughs> I mean, what else am I gonna say? Great, okay. Just to review what we have, we have H1s, and we have them in this sort of like the same content sized up so we could sort of see their scale against the same content. And then we have these like realistic versions here. I even wonder if we can split this into two columns or if there's like another layout we should do here. Um, ah, I just don't wanna mess with it. Let's keep it the typography and we'll keep this like vertical layout. So anyway, we can see them working. I do remember an issue that I had with our headers and let me just pull that over, which is our simulators we're really uh, not appreciating our typographic layout here. Look, we have some overflow. Yeah, what is going on here? It looks like I have a horizontal overflow. I have a lot of problems here. Look at that, it's like it's, what has set the width to be so wide? Because most things only have a max width, so it's not like, this is pushing. Well, let's see if it repros in DevTools here. If I squish this really small, we do have elements that aren't reflowing. And the best way to, so this one's width is 691. Do we have a width? We have max in line. Is it our, is it our body grid? Look at that. Everything is back to normal. It, oh, no, it's not. There's our culprit. Hello, natural size, natural size of 640. I pasted you that wide. I should have known. Okay, well, let's fix <laughs> why this image is so wide. Um, some classic CSS to go inside of your style sheet. So here, we'll pull below. Do we have a fig caption and stuff yet? No. All right, we'll go like this. Um, so a brief overview of this element before I go targeting its members and styling it. We have a figure, which is, um, Hopefully you know what a figure is, but it's a combination of a picture and a caption, sort of encapsulates it all together. And in here, I put it in a picture tag. So our image is in a picture and that gives me the opportunity to specify multiple sources if I wanted to, uh, which I haven't here, but I like doing this for lots of reasons and maybe that's just another video. Okay, and then we have our fig caption um, inside of this figure. So I want to, essentially all images need a style. And this is the one that I think is on most web pages. And this is like a pretty um, intro thing to write is here. Let me fix my keyboard is um, max in well here in what do we want to say? Max in line size. We're basically we'll want to say max width is 100%. Um, so we're constraining that width on there. And look, we already now fit inside of our figure, which has a whole bunch of margin on it, right? If I remember right, figures have Tons of margin. It's an obnoxious amount of margin. That's gonna be one of the first things we get rid of there. Uh, all right, so we have a max inline size and notice we did, didn't set a height and that's important. Let's even go back to our HTML, specify a width and height or just a width, um, 640. Actually, let's do a height as well, 640 and a height. Since we know it, this will save us some layout shift on our page load. Look at that. Oh, and introduce a new bug and that is because we have told the width here let's just look at it in here you can see it's all squishy right here if we look at our image um, its height is still the height that it was told and that's because its height 
is uh, should be auto. And if we look down here, look at what got written for us. This is coming from the user agent style sheet of Chromium, and it's trying to do its best to maintain the ratio of the image that we specified so that it can also paint and draw with less uh, issues. But we need to say height auto here to be very explicit that the height of this should not be the height uh, that was written on the style. We want the height to stay within the aspect ratio uh, that was defined, but be fluid with the new width, right? We have a natural sized thing. It's four by three, um, but we just set the width to something much smaller. And now we want the height to be auto. Stay with it, stay in the ratio. Um, anyway, right? Okay, so now we've got our images. Um, this is typical styles for, this isn't really a typography thing, but anyway, uh, here's height auto. And I don't wanna use height, I wanna use inline size. And maybe I should say max inline size. Let's see if that does the same thing. It does not. And that's because it's less firm. Uh, a max inline size is like, hey, if you get there, check it out. <laughs> and in this case, it's like, I didn't get there. I reached my height, 480. And you're like, oh, yes, you did. Oh, um, okay. Well, um, height auto. And you're just going to be like very explicit about it. So that will, well, here I'll say inline or block size block size auto. So now if I'm in an international rendering engine or a rendering scenario, all of my big captions and the images will be properly rotated and sized anyway. I just love logical properties, they're so cool. Um, okay, we have fixed our image and now we can pull open the emulator. <laughs> okay, excellent. And we don't need to take off our grid layout because it's not doing anything wrong. But look at how, okay, so our headers, they're too big. Um, arguably H2 should be where H1 is. Uh, we'll see how we get there. And look at this header, that's just, that's obnoxious. Um, if I pop down here, like I really like the size of our, our bullets and our paragraph text. If I was on a phone and I was reading that, I would be completely oblivious uh, to what the developer did. And that's great. I'm just gonna read it and it's gonna be very pleasant. Um, no surprises. Uh, some nice nice breathing room in here, possibly too much breathing room here. In fact, yeah, what do we have? We have a margin coming from the paragraph and we have margin coming from the UL and OL. Have we not crushed margins in this typography system yet? Um, Cause that's what I really want to do. Uh, okay, we'll get there. Let's, let's, uh, well, let's zero them out really quick here. What's the best way to zero out these margins? It's margin block pretty specifically that I want to get rid of. Let's do that. That's a pretty specific, oh, we have P, L, I, D, T. Okay, so we're gonna do P, um, H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, and U, L, O, L. Definition list, I think, has one too. Let's see. <laughs> Definition list does have Margin on the block. Oh yeah, look here, margin block. We can see it on the right. Okay, DL. Um, we're also going to zero out the figures margin. And is there any other margins in here we want to crush? Let us crush the margins. Our block quote probably has a whole bunch. Hey, let me select you block quote. There you are. Yeah, you got a ton. Uh, and I want to manage you manually, maybe. We'll, get, we'll see if we get to block quote. <laughs> it's like a quote oat, quote oat. I've been seeing in opals and bonobos too long, my kids. And I just said, quote oat and thought of that song. That's sad, sad. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, margin zero. Bye, bye margin. In fact, let's be a little less destructive and say margin block. And we'll just see if that come back comes back to get us uh, or not. And here, let's look on the right. We have a block quote, margin block zero, and we crushed the margin block that came on the block quote, but look, we still have the inline one. And honestly, I'm kind of cool with that because a block quote does need to be inset a little bit. But what we're gonna do is we are going to use custom properties there. So we'll end up overriding that, but I think what's nice is that we crushed the block uh, spacing coming from margin because I'm going to use grid or flexbox to lay these things out and I'm going to use gap so I don't need the item itself to own any spacing I'll be doing it at the parent level uh, okay 
block quote, you're fine, figure, we have our OL, LI, everything's good. Okay, I'm gonna bring back, well, let's open this up and bring back our emulator. Emulator, here you are. Okay, um, let's fix our header. That was me flicking the, the mouse and it totally wigged out. Okay, how are we going to target mobile? I would like to not target mobile. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to target it. There's no real solid ways. It's annoying. Um, you can, you, and it's easy to fake. And anyway, I'm gonna see if I can get away with it uh, with using some functions in CSS. I'm just gonna make them up right now because um, we have. See, we have this max here. I think we can clamp or max uh, here in H1. So we have a font size of four rem. So we want the maximum font size to be four rem, right? That's like the biggest we want it to go. Um, so maybe we want to pick the min, I don't know, let's just, okay, so if it's going to pick the max between the two, I need a unit here that uh, can fluctuate more than the rem can. <clears throat> so the rem, right, is relative to the root of the document, so this is like the user setting. So we're saying in H1 it's like four times their preferred reading size, but on mobile, we don't want, <gasps> let's max it out at a pixel value because a pixel value won't be affected by a uh, user preference. We can maximize something out. as sort of like a perceptual size. Per Let's try it. Um, max of, I mean, what is this, an H1? We don't want an H1 to ever be more than 72 pixels. In fact, I think that that's huge. Let's see if that even clamps it. No, that allowed it to go bigger, right? And do we see that over here? Yeah, <laughs> that went bigger. Um, how about 48 pixels? I saw it shrink 36 for an H1 though, really? Okay, so now at this point, it's taking the four rem, which is the max of them. So let's try, let's try clamp. Clamp is nice because it has a minimum uh, and sort of like optimal range in the middle and then a clamp at the top. So we're gonna clamp at the top at uh, four rem. I think that's healthy to be like, don't, don't ever go larger than four times this be a minimum of three rem. Um, so we're somewhere between three times and four times the size of their font size. And then we need a sort of multiplier thing here in the middle. I uh, you know that pixels is not working very well, but let's try it again. I just want to play. All right, let's inspect what we got here. So our font size is calculated at, oh, here, let's go to computed. I'll close this. We'll go to our font size. Boop, 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 boop. It's 48 pixels. So we can see that we result, can I have hover this and seen that too? Hover, hover on clamp. No, that's a custom property feature. And we don't have that in clamp yet. Oh, I do have a, anyway, whatever. I won't go to it. I have a user uh, request here to sort of show us which one is working. I don't, I shouldn't have to go to computer to find it. Okay, so if our minimum gets incremented just a little bit, it starts to pop above 48 pixels, it looks like. So if I come back to here, yeah. So three rem and 48 pixels are very close or the same thing. And if our min is here and see, this isn't gonna change here though. We need something that's viewport aware but we can't use viewport units because viewport units, can we do percentage then? Percentage of what? This would be the percentage of its container. So in an H1, that's not gonna work either. We don't wanna, we want percentage of viewport, but when, oh, maybe if we clamp though, we'll never, okay, so let's test it. Um, let's say five V min. So now we'll have, well, maybe we need to make it larger. Um, boop, there we go, six V min. It should be a little fluid now. I saw it, yeah, there it was, there it is being fluid. So now we're fluid between three and four rem here because we've specified uh, an active, like contextual unit here in the middle. And this unit gets criticized because when you zoom, you see how it's, oh, well, that's actually zooming fine. Maybe it was, page zoom that 
it doesn't take into account. Let's see if I can wake up this little mouse here and zoom. Okay, so that's even zooming fine. Maybe I need to go check cross browser, but there's um, there's scenarios where setting a zoom and having a viewport unit can um, can get you in a scenario where the text won't resize during zoom or can you're essentially interrupting a zoom behavior because your viewport has changed when you zoom in and you're zooming something the the viewport has changed and so the unit will change and so there's like these concepts between like a virtual viewport and then the actual that way you could have a reliable viewport unit that didn't change on zoom or you could have one that did change on zoom um so many options. Uh, anyway, we we don't have that unit available, so we're gonna try using this vmin a little bit more now, and you know we'll just suffer the consequences later and try to figure out a, a better solution. Maybe uh, there's other libraries and tools that we can use, but I'm trying to stick pretty close to just what's available out the box right now, um, and I'm gonna drop that in and see how that adjusted us here. Okay, look at that. That's actually what I wanted, right? I wanted our um, Ready Player One h1 to look like the same size as the h2 and i think we accomplished that so let's try doing the same thing on h2 so that was three as a maximum we'll set two as the minimum it's sort of like the next size below it and four v did i have to set six here to get something fluid i think so right okay our flow still looks nice here let's go back to our excellent I wonder if it's just setting it at the one below. I guess we could check here. Oh, it could be that viewport size is why it's not actually adjusting. That's good because that means at the smaller viewport size, we are going to go to the lower of the clamp. And when we go to a larger viewport size, we'll go to the high. That's pretty cool. Um, and I like how that is basically like CSS locks. So if you've heard of locks where you can um, have something liquid, but that's still being shared between two fluid spaces. We've essentially created a lock here with clamp, and um, it's kind of nice. Okay, uh, let's move on. Well, let's do this to all of them. Let's see how this does. I'll pull open our emulator again. We got, oh, what was our, okay, two rem. Down here is 1.75. Three. Looks good, okay. 1.75. 1.75, three, and the one below it is 1.5. Save, this one's 1.5. Set this at 2.5 vmin. I mean, I think these vmin units, I'm gonna have to go check to make sure that they're actually providing some fluidity. Uh, 1.25 rem, we're looking at the one below it here, and this final one at 1.25 rem. Um, I guess, I guess we'll do that. 1.25 rem here. The lowest goes one point. Well, you're a header. I don't want you to match the font size, which is at one rem. And we'll do two here like that. Okay. All right. Here's our type ramp. I don't think a whole lot changed, which is nice. We actually, that didn't change. Maybe this will change as we grow. Yeah, interesting. There's like a little bit of like a cross relationship here with the way that these resize. I could get really picky with that if I wanted to. Maybe I will later. But let's see if we fixed our mobile layout. That was pretty much the whole goal here. I think that's an okay header. Like if you were reading an article and that was, uh, that might actually be kind of obnoxious. Maybe we go smaller. I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna keep it now because this is just—it's just not broken now. And I think we could go tweak and tweeze these, and it'd be really fun. Um, but I'm gonna move on because that's a lot of time we spent on <laughs> headers and H1s and H2s. Um, and yeah, but that was nice that we got the mobile layout in one sort of dynamic definition of our font size, right? So we're saying like, be at least three times as small, but never go bigger than four times as big, uh, and be fluid to the viewport in between those. Um, so hopefully, even in a zoom scenario, clamp here helps us stay within a healthy range. We'll never get a font size into somewhere unlegible. At least that's my intent. And whether or not that comes through, that's some testing we should do. All right, okay. Um, I also added this. So we have the small, which is great, but this right here is a paragraph 
with a sup in it. Sup. And I don't know if you all know that you can do this, but a sup is a, um, it's like a super item. So look, it's got vertical aligned font size smaller. And these are great for doing cool things like background red, oh, background red, hey, color white, uh, um, oh, let's see, clip path, ellipse, 50%, can I remember this seriously, 50%? Nope, it's a circle. Yeah. Okay, width. Uh, oh, here, let's, padding. Point one X. Oh. Let's not do padding. Let's do, I mean, hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. Width. Uh, let's do one character. Height. One character. Okay, let's bump it, bump it, bump it, bump it. Oh. Uh, I see, I see what's happening. It doesn't care because it needs to be display inline block, which might actually break some. It looks like it's still a super. Let's get rid of our width and height. Let's go back to our clip path. Why are we cut off on our width? Oh, cause that's just the width of our element and it's trying to make a clip path out of it. So we do need to do something like this. It just needs to be two and display inline flex, place items, center, dope, place content center. Mm, inline grid has the best shorthand, there we go. <laughs> we got there <laughs> and it's not even a real circle. That's really annoying. Okay, clip path circle, you're, you're dead to me. Border radius, 50%. Yep, and that's a fine solution based on um, the fact that we have a height and width here. So anyway, this is kind of cool. You can have these super elements uh, be badges. You can have a little badge out of your, your super element. Um, and I'm gonna take our super elements and here, just refresh. And in our typography system, boop, 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 shoop, boop, 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 they're gonna be a slightly uh, different color. <gasps> color, we haven't done any color. How have we skipped color? Oh, that's distracting. <laughs> I guess we did this blue. All right, we're gonna have to do color here in a second uh, because this should be var uh, color two. And let's go set up a color system. Wow. Wowie wow. Have we not done this? This is like my favorite part. Okay, so we're gonna have um, text one be something. We'll have text two. I like using numbers instead of saying like darker or lighter because then when we flip them in a here at media query, oh, maybe we'll do that. I think I have a color one where I go, uh, who cares? Are we getting distracted with color? We are, uh, I don't wanna do it, let's just skip it. Uh, it's just too much, too much of a distraction. We'll just go in here and we'll say HSL zero, uh, so no hue. So we'll kind of keep everything hueless and maybe that's all we can do right now is bring in a hue to all of our colors. Okay, that sounds fine. You're like, what does he mean? I don't know. Here we go. We say hue. So this is like our brand hue. Uh, here, here we'll say brand hue, brand hue. And I've been really enjoying 300 as the base hue. So I'll come here, grab that. Let's see where do we have colors specified. Here's a color var brand hue. Here's a color var brand hue. And um, you're gonna have slight saturation, sure. And your lightness will be, let's uh, put you at 40%. So we see here, it went kind of lighter. Yes, I feel like these sub elements should be uh, just a little lighter, but it's still on hue. And here, let's bring in, so what do we have now? Yeah, now we have these like purplish ones here. Yes, yeah, so we'll have to make our link color that way too. Do we have link styles yet? No, let's do that. Uh, so this is gonna be color var boop, brand hue, oh, uh, HSL var brand hue. Uh, this is, we should have this be pretty bright and cheerful. And um, yeah, let's just see how that works. Ah, did we pass accessibility? We, mm, this is the new score that I'm still learning how to understand. So let's pop it open. It says we're failing. That's great. But it has a fix button that will set it to 
you see it to 37 percent Ooh, that's much darker but I don't care all right so what was it, it was here 37 and did it maintain our saturation it did so it just dropped the lightness down until a point at which it passed and I'm happy to do the same awesome thank you DevTools we're not passing our contrast ratios and we have a theme color that's coming through our different pages all right and that's what's fun here is I could change the hue to 200 and watch everything kind of go a little blue see how it all went blue and in fact let's make it a little bit more obvious by putting some of that color in the background here oh look here's a color it's our text color ah the body text color got skipped okay so var brand hue definitely needs some saturation so we should see these go just a little tint of red see we can't even tell can't even tell i'm happy with that okay background color it like pacifies my mind to know that the text is not like a, a hueless color, but to know that that dark gray is actually slightly red and on theme just makes me really happy. Okay, so here's our background color. We're gonna say HSL again, var brand hue, and uh, this time we're gonna have so sure 10% lightness or 10% saturation, but we want really light, so we probably won't see any of that pink. Barely. Did you see the background change? I mean, you gotta really be watching. <laughs> Let's make it saturated. This should like really make it like, yeah, there we go. That was actually kind of cool. It was too much, but it was kind of cool to see it um, warm up. Did you see it warm up? Because we're bringing in a red or a pink. Cool. Um, all right. So now our text color, and if we go look at it, what is our hex? Our hex is something funny. Well, all of our, all of our headers are still that color. So here's our color. Yeah, see how it's right down here? We could go change this and see things really get pinker. So anyway, that's on you to see how much saturation you're enjoying. Oh, that was a cool color picker that's new. Oh yeah, oh, well, whatever. Uh, all right, there's that. We have our sub, which is using some of our small should be using that, that subtle color as well. Uh, and that color we put on the sub down here. And maybe we can just share that color with the small. Sure. For now, and is that text accessible? It's not quite there in this new scheme, so let's fix it. Oh, look, it doesn't know how to fix it. Oh, now it does, okay. 300, 10%, 23%. 300, 10%, 23%. And now I'm passing. Okay, cool. Let's burn on and see what else we got. We got rid of it, so I really like this definition list layout that shared all that. This is really nice to see how these go down. Just looks like a nice system. Our paragraph is a little bit wider, same font size. You could argue that the list items should have a slightly smaller font size, but that's on your design system. It's be like LIDD here. You could be like font size 0.9M. So now it's um, contextual to the paragraph that it was used inside of, or the content. That's too small. 1M would be the same size as the, hmm. And that's because the font size is being set on the body. This is all straight up inherited all the way down because the UL doesn't have it. The UL is inside of a, yeah, it's just at the flat level. So that's why M was relative to our root font size, which is set to 1.25 rem. And what I wanted to have was be point 9m of the paragraph font size but really we can just go look at what our paragraph font size is and okay so it's font size is 1.25 rem we can pop in here font size uh, if it was 1.25 rem let's just do 1.15 rem mm, a little bit a little bit less very subtle now so our list items are slightly smaller than our paragraph text and I like that hierarchy um, again I'm just kind of floating through this a little visually and I think I want to pull out the width of these now that they're slightly smaller yeah this one got too wide though didn't it it's a DD that is getting font size 17.6 font size 17.6 so that's all good there why is sometimes it's more con it's like less confusing here yeah 17.6 17.6 okay cool um 
all right, well, I feel good about that. Let's just leave it. We've corrected our header. Let's go see how it looks on mobile really quick. Ah, see, I don't think those are too small. And I think that looks nice. Let's add some padding to our body so that the, the examples here don't look so terrible on mobile. There we go. Look at that. Just a little bit of padding in from the side makes all the difference. Okay. We're not even going to get to the fig caption, are we? We're still just nudging stuff from last time. All right. Well, I'm going to kind of call the video right here. I think we've done enough stuff. Um, these are small tweaks. We can see how long you can sit here and just tweak and tweeze design in the browser um, and try to feel these things out and how they work um, and how they look. Like I really liked getting in here and setting up those those kind of locks with custom properties and clamp um, or just with clamp. We didn't really use custom properties. I thought that turned out really nice. A big improvement. Uh, if we come down here, I think that this is all. So these are still like the essentials. We like our paragraphs so we could like create articles and headers and like a light site with this that was very content driven, like a very article driven site. We could get a, get along pretty good with this. But look at this relationship, this paragraph and this summary, that's not good. Our fig caption, our fig caption needs some treatment here. I think our figure needs some treatment. So really, um, I like shadows and I feel like a figure is begging for a shadow. And then this block quote, we could, we could probably spend 25 minutes on just the block quote. So maybe we'll do that. Uh, next time. So anyway, I hope this was mildly interesting just watching me tweak and tweeze some typography. I think it's really fun and I honestly could be in here just thinking about this stuff all day. Um, color and um, spacing and this is really, really fun stuff. Um, there's just so much feel in it. I just like how it feels. Let's go feel our way through some designs sometimes, right? Um, I think that's okay. There's a harmony to be found between like systems and feelings and let's Let's just explore it more. All right. Well, I hope that was fun. Take it easy, y'all. See you later.